Hi guys, today we're going to look at populations, genes, and evolution. So let's jump into the gene pool. This is my idea of a nice pool, but it's not a pool that's in my backyard, it's actually the gene pool. So the gene pool definition is all the genes in a population. And so what I tried to show here is that this particular person would be heterozygous for this trait. These are the two alleles that this person is contributing to this gene pool where someone like this would be homozygous for this trait, and we don't really know if this is homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive, but these two alleles are what this person is contributing to the overall gene pool. Okay, So if you think about the population that we live in, we all contribute our genes to that gene pool, and so a gene pool would be all the genes in a certain population. So the allele frequencies are the percentage of alleles in a population. So we could actually just count these up. So if we count up all the alleles, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, and then that would be our denominator, and then we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 divided by 16 would be the percentage of that allele in the population. So the allele frequency is defined as the percentage of allele in a population. So those are some definitions that we're going to use when we talk about populations, genes, and evolution. So a lot of places um, in textbooks talk about when evolution doesn't occur. And I remember when I was learning about this, I thought it was really confusing to think about what does it not happen. So, and then I was like, wait a second, there's two negatives here. So when does evolution not occur? Well, when there's no mutations, no gene flow no natural selections, and when there's large populations and random mating. But I kind of found down that really was very confusing, so I turned it around. So to say that these are all the things that cause evolution to occur. So mutations, gene flow, natural selection, small populations, and non-random mating. And I had a student a long time ago, um, Aaron Zani, um, came up with this mnemonic device that I would suggest that you guys memorize. So it's my guppy flow, nobly sits, sincerely, sincerely petrified near mice. And each one of those letters is part of the things that actually cause evolution. So mutations, gene flow, natural selection, small populations, and non-random mating. And you've already watched um, a video on mutations, and that was with the rock mouse. Um, and so you talk, they talked about how that gene for the fur color actually caught, there was a mutation what caused them to um, be more successful in their environment and that was actually natural selection happening. So both that video on the rock mouse shows mutations which lead to natural selection and both of those will lead to the evolution of the rock mouse. The non-random mating classic example of that would be artificial selection which is like dog mating or you know, breeding for dogs. So those are some examples of the different causes of evolution. So now we're going to really go into gene flow and small populations, which I've asterisked here. So gene flow is really just the movement of alleles into the gene pool and out of the gene pool. And that could be due to a lot of different things. It could be migration, emigration, immigration, um, any kind of movement of alleles into that gene pool or out of the gene pool. Small populations um, evolve really, really quickly compared to large populations. And we're going to use this term genetic drift when some chance event will really have a big effect on the allele frequency of the gene pool, and specifically in small populations. So if we took an island, say, um, if I just picked an island, say, Galapagos, since we're talking about Darwin. Darwin. If there was something natural disaster happened in that particular um, island, like a tsunami, or an earthquake, or disease, and a lot of the alleles were actually killed off from that, that pr small population can actually go through a lot of evolutionary change because they've lost a lot of um, alleles due to that natural disaster. So genetic drift is when any chance event cause the gene pool to be changed significantly in small populations. And those can be either by bottleneck events or founder effects. So one of the things that I'd like you to do is to read about both of these items in your textbook. Read about bottleneck and read about founder effect. I give you two examples here. And then be able to come to class with some examples of those um, and 
how those chance events can actually cause evolution in a small population. Natural selection we've talked about and we did a little activity related to this that first we have to have um, a population size increase. Second, there needs to be limited resources like food, water, and shelter. Third, there's competition. And then the fourth thing is that there needs to be heritable variation. There needs to be a variation within the population. And in academic biology, we did the difference between the tweezer beaks and the clothespin beaks, and that was the heritable variation that was the difference between those populations. That contributes to natural selection because the selection, there's competition, there might be predators. We'll talk a little bit about sexual selection um, in class, next class. But this those selection pressures can change that population so that over time maybe the clothespin beak birds don't live and the tweezer beak uh, birds do live and we kind of saw that happening. So what that hap what causes that shifts in the population if normally we see a bell-shaped curve in a population where the majority of the people are in the center you know the heterozygous people are here and the homozygous recessive people are here and homozygous dominant here if something happens to cause the shift so that now there's more homozygous dominance, we call this type of a shift, when it's shifting to the right or left, a directional shift. Here, it's stabilizing because we're getting more of the heterozygous and the other ones are going down, the homozygous recessive and the homozygous dominance. So again, this is directional, it's going in one direction. Here, it's stabilizing. And here, instead of the bell-shaped curve, we're actually pushing down that and we're increasing the homozygous recessives and the homozygous dominance, and this is called disruptive selection. So those are the different types of selection. And these are actually also documented in the textbook. Great idea to look those over as well. So those are some things that cause evolution, again, to practice that mnemonic device, my guppy flow, nobly sit, sincerely petrified near mice, um, would be a valuable thing to do. So I hope you get that memorized by class tomorrow and then bring your questions to class. Thanks!